Hey everyone, thanks for watching. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to take a Cisco video endpoint that's configured the way that you like it. You can then uh, actually take that endpoint and clone it to the other endpoints in your environment. You can do this uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, or you can actually do it using Cisco Unified Communications Manager as well, which makes it nice to be able to actually administer it centrally. Uh, with that being said though, we're going to dive in and check it out. Uh, of course, if you're new here, consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up if you find this helpful. Uh, documents in the video description. But with that being said, uh, let's dive into it. Alright, so let's dive right into it. As you can see, I am already on the maintenance tab and the backup and restore option. Uh, here is where we do our create backup and restore backup. We'll take a look at restore backup here in just a moment. Uh, underneath of this though, there are all of your options. You can see I have branding and we can actually break this out by specific branding material. Is it uh, all of it? Half-wake background, half-wake branding, those types of things. Um, so we can select or deselect those. We can do favorites. We can do uh, UI extensions. So I actually built a join Zoom meeting extension and I have an associated macro. Uh, so one thing to be aware of is you can pick these individually. So if I uncheck the macro, the UI extension might not function correctly because it may use the macro. So just something to be aware of. Uh, I'm actually gonna exclude this one because it's uh, an audio config, which is more specific to this unit, the RoomKit Pro. Sign in banner and then configuration itself. Now all of this stuff up here is more of the the large button, large you know assets, the type of thing, right? So the picture, the background image, the branding, and the UI buttons. There are configuration items that you can back up as well. I'm actually gonna uh, exclude it, but you can grab this entire thing and you can also remove system specific configurations. So you see it removed 11 lines there. This would be stuff that uniquely identifies this, such as network information, SIP URI information, and system name. So if you restored this to another endpoint, it would actually cause problems, right? If they were statically IP addressed, for instance, you'd have two IP addresses the same on the network. It'd be a problem, right? So in a true backup restore scenario, you want this. In a clone scenario, you're gonna exclude those types of things. And really some of this stuff you might exclude as well. The nice thing is, is we can actually come in here and we can scroll through, we can see all of it and we can actually uh, remove things or uh, change things, right? So uh, web engine mode on, for instance, uh, just to pick one. Uh, either way, I have unchecked the include box there. When I'm done, simply hit download. It will uh, prompt you, it's gonna have backup, the system you know, name, date and um, a couple, a couple other items, I'm trying to think what that is, where that number's coming from. I think that's uh, the VLAN it's on or something. But uh, .zip, and um, yeah, save it uh, as an archive. And then we'll jump over and actually, I'll actually open it up and show you what's in it. All right, so here I have extracted the backup file into its own folder. You can see the items that are inside of it. I have the branding assets. These are actually the, uh, the different image files that were loaded on the system. So uh, they're saved there. There is the macro zoom join macro. This is uh, JavaScript on the system in the, the macro language. And if I open it up, I can see the text of that file. A little error message there with my text editor. But, um, but yeah, there you can see the, uh, the text of that macro. There is a manifest. This is actually the inventory of all the different files that are included, right? So we have our sign-in banner, branding, phone book, XML, all this stuff, file name, date, those types of things. You know, there's someone who's probably gonna ask, can I edit this stuff manually and build my own package? You, you probably could. I would probably recommend against it, particularly because it's so easy to just build it on the endpoint and export it. Um, there's something you'll see here also that you generate a hash from this file. So it's really important to just make sure the package is complete, solid, it's not gonna cause problems. Um, but I suppose you could if you really felt the need to. Uh, there's some panel configuration. It's an XML, phone book, sign-in banner, and uh, another, another UI element there. So that's what's in the package. It's all pretty straightforward. Um, from here, let's uh, let's actually go ahead and push it back into an endpoint and get it into Unified Communications Manager. 
Now, if you want to restore a backup, you actually go to that same place, maintenance, backup and restore, and move over to the restore backup tab. Go to browse. You can then grab that backup file, hit open. It is going to do a uh, SHA-512 sum of that file. Now, this is important over in Unified Communications Manager. This is actually one of the ways you can get this SHA-512 value is right here. The other is to use a SHA-512 sum you know, tool on your system. I'll show you that here in just a second. When you're convinced you're ready to go, you can hit Upload File. We'll say Upload. Uh, uploading and applying and then it gives you success criteria all of the different things that were applied so of course this is the manual option if you want to just grab and clone you know one endpoint to maybe two or three other endpoints certainly an easy way to do it and uh, yeah that's pretty much it when you go to the endpoint now you'll have all of these settings uh, available right on the unit in Unified Communications Manager we can actually go use this backup file as a custom provisioning file this is actually UCM uh, 11.5, and uh, if you scroll the whole way to the bottom of a device configuration, you can see customized provisioning, customized file, and that file that I generated, I, uh, I put in here. I also put the SHA-512 hash, and uh, you know, just paste that in here. If you do need to generate your own, what you can do is actually use the SHA. SHA sum A 512 and the file. Now, obviously, got to be in the same directory as that file, and uh, it's going to spit that hash out here for you as well. So, you are, uh, yeah, you're good to go if you need to get the sum value of that and, uh, and don't have an endpoint to plug it into to get it to, uh, you know, spit out that value as well. When you're done with that, simply apply the configuration and uh, give it some time to be pulled down on the endpoint. One thing I'll mention is that you do have to, in fact, upload this file to the TFTP directory of UCM. If you wanted to host it on a different server, on a different web server, for some reason, you could certainly put the path in here for that as well. When you host it on a different platform, though, you have to go uh, like this, right? Server.com, whatever, slash... Uh, then the, the path to it. Uh, likewise, if it's on an alternate port, something like this, you know, then uh, you're just something to be aware of. Typically, though, it's not a large file. I would just host it right on TFTP uh, itself, and uh, you're good to go. Hit comply or hit a, a, apply configuration when you're done, and things should be good to go. Hopefully that's been helpful for you in the uh, management of your endpoints. Um, with great power comes great responsibility, of course, so do your testing, do your homework. I have some documents in the uh, video description if you want to do a little further research. Uh, with that being said, though, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.